Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a discovery of a very unusual planet in a very strange location and, once again, completely by accident. Let's talk about the discovery of this planet right here and welcome to Odemath. To date we've discovered quite a lot of different planets and a lot of them were discovered in a more or less known method to us by looking at the shadow of the planet passing in front of its star. But there are so many different unique methods of discovering planets that sometimes when we discover a planet in a very specific way I actually have to talk about it, mostly because it's so unique and so rare. One of such methods is the so-called gravitational lensing methods and this has to be my favorite. Now, okay, imagine for a second you look in at the night skies and you basically see something like this. A sudden, unusual flash in the night skies. Or maybe something like this. Another flash very similar to the one I just showed you. And today we usually refer to these as gravitational lenses, mostly because that's how they are formed. These are lensing effects formed by something gravitationally intense right sort of in front of the object. In most cases, we often talk about these uh, when they're formed by really massive galaxies, for example, but they're also formed by other objects like stars and obviously planets. And the thing is, if a normal person just sees this, they'll think, oh, this is great, looks amazing, very cool. But it takes a special kind of scientist to actually look at this flash and use the few seconds or few minutes of exposure here to try to analyze what possibly caused this. And this is exactly what the scientists behind the study did. And I personally often am fascinated with these gravitational lensing studies, mostly because of what these scientists discovered at the end and how extremely accurate their analysis is in terms of discovering what specifically caused these effects. So obviously, as you can probably tell from the title of this video, they discovered a planet, but not just any planet, a very interesting super-Earth, the smallest planet discovered using gravitational lensing so far, and also in a location extremely close to the center of our own galaxy. So we're actually talking about the region right in the middle of the galaxy known as the Galactic Bulge. This particular discovery came from possibly within about 1000 light years or so of the center of the galaxy, which is roughly around 26,000 light years away from where we are. Basically, if we were to look at the galaxy from the top, Earth is right there on the bottom and this particular planet was somewhere within the bulge itself. And obviously this is actually the only planet we've discovered so far in this particular region in the center of the galaxy. And to achieve all of this, the scientists had to use um, a relatively well-established and actually kind of old experiment known as OGLE, the so-called Optical Gravitational Lensing Experiment. For this particular discovery, they actually used the telescopes, one of many telescopes, located right here in Chile. Now Chile, for some reason, I guess because it has so many mountains and clear skies, is a very popular destination for a lot of astronomers. And I actually had to cheat a little bit to find this particular observatory because there are so many observatories in this region. So it's right here, it's called La Campanas Observatory, and basically here several different uh, projects are run by several different countries, including Poland, which originally started OGLE experiment, and um, South Korea that joined in with a lot of different telescopes around the world. The observatory itself is not really that complicated, but its mission is basically to look into the night skies and to try to discover as many lensing effects as it can. And it's been doing a pretty good job because pretty much every single year it discovers roughly around 3000 different lensing effects, although pretty much most of them, if not all of them every year, are from typical stars passing in front of other stars. Basically, in our galaxy, we expect this to be a relatively rare event. Roughly around 1 in every 1 million stars will experience a gravitational landing effect every year. But because there are so many stars out there, we get to see quite a lot of them in total. But the much more rare event here would be, of course, to not just see any star, but to see a star where a planet is passing in front of a star or possibly behind a star at just the right moment when the gravitational lensing effect occurs. So basically right here. Now, this is an extremely rare event. It almost never happens. We've only gotten these because we got super lucky. And today, because the observations are so precise, using these gravitational lensing observations, we can then actually use the amount of lensing effect to not just estimate, but precisely calculate what precisely caused the lensing effect to occur. And this is what the paper is about. The scientists were observing this particular star for about five days. 
And during that 5 day observation window, for about 5 hours they were able to observe something unusual causing another micro lens within the bigger lens, which allowed the scientists to then estimate the mass of the star, the approximate distance to the star, and of course the approximate mass of the planet with a very accurate sort of representation of what the star system might look like. And the important thing to understand here is that we cannot even see the star at all because it's so small and so dim in comparison to anything else around it. Basically, the star itself is what's known as a red dwarf. To give you a kind of a comparison here, it's kind of like if I were to look at the bulge from this distance, which is roughly around the same as it is in reality, and then trying to basically look in the middle right there, which we can sort of do by zooming in here a little bit, and then essentially somewhere in here we're trying to find one single star that is practically invisible because it's so extremely, extremely dim. A red dwarf is much dimmer than any other star similar to our sun, for example. And if we were to look at the nearest such star to us, which is Proxima Centauri, you would actually still have trouble seeing it, you would have to zoom in quite a lot in order to finally be able to actually see the star itself, which is somewhere right there. There it is. So these are dim stars, but seeing this from a distance of 26,000 light years is absolutely mind-blowing. And all of this was achieved through the beautiful effect known as microlensing. Now, this in itself is already a great achievement, but just the fact that this happened completely by accident when we were looking at this for about 5 days, and also just the fact that this is in the middle of the galaxy where we've never seen planets before, and on top of this, this planet is only a little bit more massive than Earth, basically this is the smallest planet we've discovered with this method, already makes this an incredible achievement. And so let's actually try to recreate what the scientists saw here with the gravitational lensing effect using their parameters. In other words, let's recreate the star system. So the star itself is actually very, very similar to nearby Proxima Centauri. It's roughly around 12% the mass of the sun. So if I were to place the sun next to it, it would sort of look like this. A much, much smaller star, but also a star that is going to live for about a few trillion years. But these are the most common stars in the galaxy, so that in itself is not a surprise. What is unusual about it though is that the planet orbiting around it, which in this particular simulation is going to look kind of like this, mostly because it's a really cold planet, is approximately 4 masses of Earth, suggesting that this is actually what's known as a super-Earth. So we don't really know if it's a gas world, but it's more likely to be a somewhat uh, unusual, somewhat large ice-like world, ice planet, with somewhat similar conditions to maybe Neptune or maybe Earth. And these planets and also these star systems are obviously a mystery to us. We always are really interested to find out what happens around these red dwarf stars. But the problem in this star system is that the planet is really far away. If you were to actually look at the habitable zone of this system, it's very 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 far in the middle. So this is basically where you would expect any liquid water to exist. If we were to compare this to the solar system, this is essentially kind of where, I guess, Uranus and Neptune are. The single year here takes about 617 days, and the temperatures here are probably really, really cold. But because this planet is much more massive, and because we know that M-type stars often have many different Earth-like planets, there are probably a lot more planets closer to the center, and some of them could potentially host liquid water. But we can't really know for sure, and the thing is, it's very likely we'll never really see anything about this star ever again, for a very simple reason. These events normally only happen once, because basically here a star in the background has to align with the star in front in a very specific location pointing directly at Earth. This is such an extremely rare event. And because the star is so dim to begin with, meaning that because it's an M-type star, we're not going to be seeing this with our telescope or any telescopes that we have in the future, probably ever. It's just a little bit too dim and too small to be seen. In other words, this is probably, maybe, the only time we'll ever hear about this planetary system. But it's still an important discovery because basically it confirms that M-type stars can definitely have relatively large and relatively massive planets, a lot more massive than a typical Earth-like planet, specifically a super-Earth. And more importantly, they can be really, really far away from the star itself at a distance where you would not really expect these massive and large planets to exist. 
but in this case it seems to exist and it seems to do just fine. But because the telescopes in this region, specifically the Korean telescopes, are actually equipped to look at approximately 100 million different stars and to try to calculate their light and their luminosity every 15 minutes, it's not going to be long before we discover more unusual planets somewhere out there and more incredible discoveries using this gravitational lensing technique. So basically, when it comes to discovering unusual strange planets using very, very unique techniques, technically this is the golden age. We're getting better and better at it, and we're discovering more and more unusual objects we never thought would be possible. But unfortunately, in case of this particular planet, that is probably all we're ever going to learn about it. We'll definitely discover more super-Earths around M-type dwarfs, because they do seem to exist, and they don't seem to be too difficult to detect, so it will be only a matter of time before we find a very good technique to find these planets. But for now, it's just a really crazy discovery. Just the fact that it's in the middle of the galaxy, so far away from us, and it's a planet that we don't typically see around M-type stars. So in other words, the scientists got super lucky in seeing this system and in seeing this planet. But I guess until we discover more unusual planets, that's kind of it. You can check out more about this in the paper in the description below. And if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning more about space and sciences, and possibly come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Consider supporting this channel on Patreon, it does help me quite a lot. Alternatively, you can also support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that you can also find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye